Hey guys, today we're going to go over the most essential settings in Lightroom and understand what they mean and then go over catalog settings. Uh, real simple, don't necessarily just check everything I'm checking, try to understand it and see what works best for you. Alright, let's jump into it. Hey. Hey. So hit command, command comma to jump into preferences or go up into Apple and choose uh, Lightroom preferences. Uncheck show import dialog upon card detected. I like to uncheck this because I use Finder to copy all my files over into Lightroom. I do all my one-to-one -one copying in Finder. I get the files over and then I choose import and add them. So when a card is detected, I don't want Lightroom doing anything. Uh, I'm gonna do that on my own. Cool. I also uncheck show current previous import. When you do an import, it's gonna select focus to that import automatically, and you watch this folder populate. That's kind of boring. I wanna go back to what I was just looking at, so if I uncheck this, I go right back to whatever I was just working on. Presets. All right, if you have one catalog, you're gonna to wanna to check to save your presets with catalog, and this allows your presets to move with your catalog if you put it on an external drive and take it to multiple computers. Uh, it's really handy just keeping your presets with it. If you have multiple catalogs, watch my first video. <laughs> external editing. Okay, so this is one of the most important ones. It's a little tricky to understand. Uh, for me personally, I use a lot of layered files and, um, and my layers like adjustment layers and things that PSD files make more sense of and compress better. So I get smaller file sizes with PSDs and... They work better than TIFFs for me. And, um, the Photoshop files are limited to two gigabytes, so I kind of hit a wall sometimes with that and have to use uh, TIFF files or PSB, but in general, for the file format for opening Photoshop, I like PSD and the color space is ProPhoto RGB. And ProPhoto RGB is what you're looking at all your previews in, so if you want to maintain the same sense of color space, you want to check that. Uh, bit depth, this is important. You want to keep all your details. So if you choose 16 bit, you're going to get more details in the image. And resolution doesn't matter. Uh, no, this really. Unimportant because it changes like the file. This is all kind of way, way too complicated. complicated and you and probably, probably never, never use it. Use so, it. so just, just set, set it, it at, it's at 240. You can put 120. You can put 999. Uh, you're cool. File handling. This is pretty straightforward. I like to keep these settings standard. So. Interface. Interface. All right. This is more of a preference. Preference. Personally, I like to have my interface dark to be easier on my eyes. Um, this kind of gives a little more perceived contrast. So when I'm going to post something on white, I like to use the soft proofing key, which is S. And this lets me have a white border around my image to see what it will look like on a white web page or some sort of social site. Performance. All right, this is a double check. You want to use the graphics processor and smart previews. If you have an older machine or running into some sort of issues with crashing, it might have something to do with this setting. So you want to uncheck the use graphics processor first if you're experiencing any kind of issue. Lightroom Mobile. Lightroom Mobile. Light, 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 Lightroom Mobile. All right, Lightroom Mobile. This is important. Uh, I'm going to make an entire video about Lightroom Mobile uh, and, and how great it is. So just you want to log in here on these settings to your CC account and specify where you want your photos to be saved to. So there's even more preferences inside catalog settings. So you want to go to Lightroom, catalog settings, and these are specific settings to each catalog, but if you only have one catalog, you only need to do this once. All right, so the first option here is to back up your catalog. You want to back up your catalog regularly, and this is important to do to a second drive so that if something happens to the drive the catalog is on, you have a backup. Uh, the backup will take a while when you choose to optimize and test integrity. These options will improve the speed of your current catalog, uh, not just the backup. So you want to check these and do this process when you have time to let the computer run. On file handling, I make sure I discard my one-to-one -one previews in 30 days or less. Because these one-to-ones are rarely used multiple times and only really needed once. This is the most important setting in the entire video. It's hidden under metadata and catalog settings. But if you go to the third option, it says automatically write changes into XMP. And this is basically an autosave of every edit you're doing as you're doing it. 
When you slide a slider in the develop module, it's going to write a sidecar XMP file that contains all your edit decisions. So this is going to destruct your raw file. It's going to be a new separate file that takes up a fraction of space and it's going to record all of your raw settings. This won't record metadata or your organization of your catalog, but each time you do an edit, there will be a recording of it in an XMP file that you can open an other third party or Adobe Camera Raw to get your develop settings right where they were. So this is just for the worst case scenario. If something happened to your catalog and you lost it all, you could go back to your edits and they're all recorded. So this is a no brainer. You definitely want to check this. Cool. That was simple. Those are just basic settings. If you want to know more about workflow and fundamentals, check out my video on that or go to my channel to check out more quick tips. Thanks guys.